Christ. And I met a gentleman, oh, several months ago. He was about 65 and uh, was retired but didn't have enough money for retirement. And he went out and bought a small duplex that gave him about $1,000 a month cash flow. And then he went out and bought another duplex that gave him about 2000 a month cash flow. So he's got 3000 a month cash flow that he put together in six months. And he had never done that before. He had never bought real estate. Would so you recommend the books, too, that um, No Money Down by Robert Allen as a um, good place to start as well? Yeah, he actually has a book that I that was I like creating wealth even better. Um, we're, we're not necessarily No Money Down people. We want our money working for us. And a lot of times, No Money Down, you, it's difficult to to get the cash flowing. It's ah. difficult to find cash flow with no money down. You also want to be careful on how much debt you're carrying because this is a crazy market right now, so you need yeah. to be a little smarter, a little more careful. But your advice is that uh, they're in their 50s, but it's never too late and certainly better late than never, yes. and that you don't have to necessarily have a lot of money to go out and buy that first property. Absolutely not. No. Okay, that's excellent. I think we have time for one more question. All right. Yes, final question, please, for Robert or for Kim. Okay. okay. I have a question. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good. Um, I, I'm one of those who is very novice and very much a beginner at this, and I invested about $2,800 in a company I strongly believe in. It was at $25 a share. It's now worth almost $50 a share. Okay. That's all I know. <laughs> I know I've made... Yeah, go ahead, Kim. So the question is... I'm sorry, I, I went into quiet mode too soon. Um, we couldn't hear your question. Okay. My question is, I, I know I've made money, but now I'm not quite sure. How do I learn what to do with it or to, whether to do anything with it at all? And, you know, Kim, that's an excellent question, too, because isn't one of your philosophies that you never touch your, your investing nest egg? You don't take that money that you've earned and go spend it on a, on a new house or on a boat or on decorations for the home, but you have to reinvest it? That, that's right. We have a, a rule that any money that goes into our asset column, which is basically our investment column, once we put money into an investment, we might sell that investment, but the money goes into another investment. So I see a lot of people who might buy a, buy a um, say, a, a single-family home as a rental, and they sell it, and then they go pay off their school loan. Um, the problem with that is then they're back to zero. So we say, you know, build up your cash flow, keep investing with your money, keep making that money work for you, and then the cash flow from your investments will pay off your school loan or your car loan or your mortgage house, um, ah. that type of thing. So you use not the investment itself or the appreciation on the investment, but you use the cash flow to pay to decorate your home or to, to um, do some of those items that you want to improve your standard of living. Yeah, that, that, and that's a great point, Rebecca, because there, there's a big difference whether you're buying an investment for cash flow, which is what we do, or you're buying, an, buying it for capital gains or appreciation. So in this market right now, especially in real estate, a lot of people are buying houses and flipping them for the appreciation. The problem with that, I mean, that's one strategy, but the problem is they have to keep doing it. And if you buy investments for cash flow, you keep building your cash flow, so eventually those properties are just paying you every month where you don't have to work anymore. Boy, this um, interview has been so informative. Um, we're out of time now, so I want to let everyone know that you can click on the link underneath the bio I sent you for Robert and Kim to go over to their sites, or you can go to uh, www.richdad.com or www.richkidsmartkid.com. Lots of great information. You can buy the uh, books and the game from those sites. They're also available from Amazon.com. Uh, I want to also let you know, listeners, that uh, we are recording these calls, and there are two options for getting the recordings. Uh, either one, you can buy the complete 16 CD set for $99, and it comes in a nice uh, leather carrying case, or for uh, the end of August only, you can go in and hand select which interview you want. Uh, they're $8 each, and if you purchase 10 or more, we're happy to give you the nice uh, leather carrying case. Uh, feel free to share the expenses with other families and pass them around. Uh, very little profit margin put in this. We just want you to be able to hear these terrific interviews, and, and the more people, the better. So I'm going to open up the call, so uh, feel free to unmute your phone, star six to unmute so that you can say uh, goodbye and thank you to our guests, Robert and Kim Kiyosaki. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Thank Keep you. up your good work. Robert and Kim. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.